What I have next to me is the new Polo GD TSI. After selling the Polo GD TSI in India for almost 9 good years, we can confidently say that this is the flag bearer for affordable performance in India. But there is a new kid on the block that is trying to steal this car's mojo. Yep, this is Hyundai's answer, the i20 Turbo. Hyundai claims it to be the fastest and most powerful car in the segment, and it is meant to bring the fight straight into the GT TSI's backyard. So will the Polo maintain its legacy or will the i20 dethrone the king of the segment? Should you pick the i20 Turbo or the Polo GT TSI? I'm Som Saraf and he's Bhavneet Vaswani and you're watching The Driver's Hub. Between both of these cars, the Polo is the one that shows its age the most because this is basically the same design that Volkswagen have been selling in India for almost 11 years now. There have been a few bumper touch-ups here and there, a few Botox areas here and there, but overall, this is the same car that has been on sale for almost 11 years. This is not the same Polo that you find in the European market. That is the new Mark 7 Polo. This is still the 6R Polo that you find in India. And it's the same chassis, same headlights, almost everything is the same. And it's not a bad looking car in that sense, but I think it's high time that Volkswagen gets the newer one in India now. Some good things about this Polo are that even today, it still looks very handsome. But like I said, it does lack the modern touches that its rivals get. The headlights don't get LED DRLs for example. In fact, the headlights don't get DRLs at all. From 2019 onwards, all Polos got the sporty GTI bumpers all around with the honeycomb grille. So that was an added benefit along with the updated tail lights. When it came out, the Polo was the hot new thing on the block for the younger generation. But with time, it has slowly evolved into a car that most middle-aged gentlemen would choose over its rivals because the i20 Swift, Baleno or whatever it competes against looks a little bit too childish. The i20 outside is an all-new generation of design too. It's all about sharp creases and sharp edges. However, the rad and young styling might not be to everyone's choice. I personally feel like it is quite overstyled and it is to overcompensate the quality of the interior cabin which uh, the Korean giants have been doing lately to cut costs, of course. But that isn't to say that the i20 looks bad. It just has a more juvenile approach to things. If I were an 18 year old kid who had just gotten his license, the i20 Turbo and especially the new i20 N line would be at the top of my list because it looks like an angry little bulldog and compared to the Polo, the i20 has a lot of tech that we Indians love to boast about but never use. Moreover, the i20 is with the times with its aggressive DRLs up front, massive grille that looks way too big for the 1 litre turbo behind it, to its swoopy tail lights and angular side spoiler or whatever it is. It all comes together to give us a car that looks angry all the time, which is good, I think, if you're 18. In the interior, the retroness still continues and this is the same setup in the interior that Volkswagen has been running for over a decade now. And again, there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. Uh, in fact, compared to that funky looking interior in the Hyundai, if you're a more mature and more simplistic person, you would like the Volkswagen's interior more. And compared to the Hyundai, the build quality of this Volkswagen's interior is absolutely night and day. I mean, first of all, the plastics are much better than the Hyundai's and nothing creaks that much. And and uh, Volkswagen have given a touchscreen upgrade over here and you get this decently sized touchscreen in the middle which has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and the animations, the graphics and everything is butter butter smooth. You get this three spoke flat bottom steering wheel compared to the Hyundai's rounded steering wheel that is a nice little touch that Volkswagen has been doing to their Polo models nowadays and it really gives that sporty edge over the Hyundai. This car now comes equipped with uh, cruise control as well. So on the highway, it's a great experience because you don't have to do a lot of work. Overall, this interior is kind of great in my opinion because even if it's almost over a decade old now, it has held its own against the competitors and these seats, this interior, overall, it's a very good package. In the i20, it's back to modern days. The i20's interior is definitely much more modern than of 
the polos but in my opinion there is quite a lot going on the instrument cluster is quite tacky and the in the plastics aren't hyundai's best but you do get all of the 2021 gizmos that uh, you want like apple carplay android auto rear ac vents wireless charger push button ignition and the list goes on and on and on even though i feel that the instrument cluster is tacky and that is highly subjective i do have to agree that it is much better than the medieval cluster that the polo gets the infotainment system of the i20 is also far superior with better resolution better graphics and more functions the sound system is also a big talking point in the i20 with its bow speakers all around Another point that you might consider is that the Polo's rear seating space is quite cramped compared to the i20s which is relatively better. But all of this is not important one bit. What is important is how these two drive. The power figures indicate that the i20 should have the upper edge over the old man and rightly so the post 2000 rpm you can hear the thrum of the three cylinder engine and fact is there is a reason to open it up because post 2000 rpm there is a very linear surge of power the turbo kicks in quite smoothly and it's quite enjoyable and intoxicating very easy to overtake the D seven speed dct gearbox is more of a convenient and enjoyable and smooth experience more than a snappy and sporty experience you would expect from a dual clutch system however this would be a turn off only if uh, you have experienced something like a DSG from VW so if you are coming from a four cylinder polo to this you will feel the di the difference in uh, the shifts and it's slightly more lethargic but this is not a slow gearbox by any means chuck the i20 into a corner and the chassis will fare decently but i wouldn't call the experience rewarding um there is quite a little bit of numbness when you give input into the steering and there is very little feedback which can be a little turn off if you've driven the polo before the i20 that isn't to say that the polo is the most responsive car in the world but in the modern era of assisted steerings the i20 is as big as it gets it also doesn't have any weight therefore the steering is quite a big let down but that isn't to say that the i20 isn't fun the brakes are decent the engine and gearbox is responsive enough to provide you the power that is needed the handling is all right nothing too special and well it is a meh car overall when it comes to driving this new gt tsi gets the cleaner and more efficient 1 liter tsi engine from vw's lineup and this engine has a lot of sporting credentials it has been derived from the up gti which is a small little hot hatchback that you find in europe and well this motor is very strong it produces 110 horsepower and 175 newton meters of torque compared to its predecessor which had the 1.2 tsi engine this engine makes 5 more bhp but even if this engine in on paper is not as impressive as the last one because it's lost 200 cc and in fact it's lost even one cylinder yes this is a three cylinder turbocharged unit it still has more performance capability than the last 1.2 tsi because this is a doxc engine compared to the 1.2 tsi which was a single overhead cam engine so when it comes to ringing this car out to its red line it does not lose out power when it comes to that so even if you take this car all the way to its red line which is 6500 rpm there is going to be no power loss in that sense because the 1.2 tsi used to run out of puff when you used to go over 4000 4500 rpm but that is not the case with the 1 liter tsi it is mighty in that sense paired to the engine is a 6 speed torque converter unit and compared to the older dsg 7 speed unit that you used to find in the gt tsi This isn't as snappy or as responsive and that is because again it's a torque converter at the end of the day. 
one complaint and one major complaint that the owners had uh, with this new gearbox unit is the creep function that this car had and it's a little bit too aggressive for a lot of people so that is one thing that you have to keep in mind while buying this car but overall the polo has stayed pretty much the same the handling is decent uh, the chassis is super stiff the suspension is comfortable when you need it and stiff when you don't so when it comes to uh, canyon drives this is going to be as great as the older polo was and if you enjoyed the polo this is going to be a great upgrade as well because the uh, tuning capability of this new 1 liter TSI is miles above the 1.2 TSI and again you don't have the uh, anxiety in your mind while buying this car and tuning it to whatever you want because the DSG is not there so the probability of a DSG failure happening in this car is well zero because that gearbox is no more and well the GT TSI is the GT TSI at the end of the day you can't go wrong with it and that is where unfortunately the Hyundai starts losing ground to this 10 year old German car the aftermarket support that comes with buying a VAG product is nowhere near as good as a Hyundai. Renowned brands like APR, Revo and even our own tuning partners, Autodesir Performance have a stage 1 or a stage 2 tune ready to go along with performance upgrades in stock for the new 1 liter TSI engine. Whereas the 1 liter TGDI I found in the Hyundai, although on paper is way more impressive, in the real world isn't nowhere near the 1 liter TSI, nor does it have the tuning capability that the Polo gives. But that isn't to say that the i20 doesn't have its own strengths. If tech and looks matter, the i20 takes the cake with its futuristic cabin with screens all over along with its funky looks. Either way, both these cars are great options for a person looking for a sporty, everyday hatchback. Although this segment only a few years ago was hustling and bustling with real, enthusiast cars like the Punto Abad, Tigor JTP and dare I say it, even though the 1.2 TSI GT wasn't the best thing out there, that DSG transmission was truly something unique. Before we end this video, a big shout out to our friends over at VW PU Bhandari. They have a great network of dealerships from different brands and their VW sales and service is the most highly regarded in Pune. So if you're looking to buy a VW, get yourself one from VW PU Bhandari. McRae on the inside, going to take it. And Senna sprints away, Senna is trying to...